Welcome to Leitrim County Matters, coming up in today's show. We will be heading to Carrigallon to catch up with Sarah Ricaldi and Marion Flink from the Irish County's Jewellery Company. They'll be talking about their 1916 commemorative collection, which they launched at the dock in Carrick and Shannon. After that, we will be heading to Ahakashal, where we will find out the connection between the Hapney Bridge in Dublin and Leitrim. We will also finish with music by Nick Della, a talented musician from Drumahair. But first, I'll be talking to Martin Doyle, a local business owner from just outside Carrigallon. He, like many business owners countywide, have faced increasing problems with the lack of broadband in rural areas. Leitrim County Matters, Martin. Thanks for joining us. You're welcome. Martin, you're from Dublin. I'm originally from Scaries, yeah, County Dublin. And how did you come here to the lovely Carrig Allen? I looked for a nice quiet place so I could get the inspiration from, and that's what led me to Leitrim. Although I did look at other places, but I mean, Carrig Allen was a fantastic spot, and the scenery around here is really. So, how did you get into sculpting in the first place? Well, it was a long time ago when I was in the army, I was uh, 17, and uh, on a weekend I was kept in, and I decided to uh, cut away at a piece of turf. And I did an actual, because my officer had uh, prominent features like chin, peak cap, glasses, I sculpted that into a piece of turf, and that's what started me on it. Oh, a, a piece of turf to this material is some jump. Could you talk to me about the materials that you use for your sculpture? I generally, nowadays I generally sculpt in clay and then I work off and make a mould off that. So after you sculpt into the clay and you do all your detail work, I put a signature on it and then I put a silicone cap over that just to get the reproduction. And that's surrounded by a shell. And then when I take off the shell, take the original clay work out and then I cast resin bronze resin cast into that. Wow, that's quite a long process, but it hasn't stopped you from, well, your business is very popular now. A lot of your pieces are commissioned. I get a good few commissions now, as of late, more so than, than before. Yeah, years ago, I used to work on bigger sculpts, and I'd stone cast them, but they were difficult to transport when you were doing shows like Galway Races, Punchestown, etc. you know? So, yeah, I, I started working on smaller pieces a while back and they, they seem to be taken off now. Brilliant. And how have you found um, kind of upscaling your business or increasing your operations? How have you found that with a lack of internet and broadband? Well, unfortunately, that's one of the, the biggest bugbears and that is the, the lack of a good service of broadband around this area. I mean, you have prob probably a monopoly of probably one carrier of, of broadband and then they don't give you a fantastic service, so it's not much use complaining, complaining about it because, you know, you're not getting any response, really. Yeah. And how have, you, well, how have you gone about accessing the internet then um, in the meantime without broadband here at the house? Well, un unfortunately, it's only a three-day a week where I go down to the local library, yeah. and that's from Mondays, Wednesdays and Saturdays, and you check your emails and, and check what's, what sort of visits you get on, online. And is the situation going to change any time soon, do you think? Um, I know that you've launched your new website and you'd like that to be accessible. Well, I, I find it very hard to get any answers off air. And they seem to be doing a lot of work in the area at the moment, between lines going up on poles and lines going underground. But again, there doesn't seem to be any answers any time you ask a question. When is it coming? And what is your business called for those, for those people watching that would like to um, inquire about these pieces and get them into their homes and get them into their lives, they're gorgeous. It's Cruhu, C-R-U-T-U, and again, any of the old Irish speakers will know with the, with the shavu over the T that it, it creates that, that sound, Cruhu, and that's the Gaelic for creation.
If you want to find out more about his artwork, you can visit crew2.ie. But now I'm going to head down the road to the Corn Mill Theatre in Carrigallon. I'll be talking to Sarah Riccardi and Marion Flink from the Irish County's Jewelry Company and about their 1916 commemoration collection. Thanks for joining me, Soraya Riccardi and Marion Fink. So this is your joint venture then, so you, you have your own business, business in framing. Picture framing business, yes. And you're, in, you're a goldsmith, so you both have come together to work on these pieces. So you mentioned uh, Amanda Jane Graham. Mm -hmm. You worked with a few people on this collection, the 1916 commemoration collection. Yes, we worked with Amanda Jane Graham, who did the piece which is related to the, the Women's Council. And uh, we did another piece with um, Piers Healy, who is a hand engraver from Dublin. Actually, both people are from Dublin. And uh, Piers does a very old craft. It is hand engraving, and I don't think a lot of people would still be doing hand no, engraving. No, it's a very unique skill. Uh, so it's not that and, but both people are very, very nice. They were very accommodating, and they supported us very much with the idea to, to do a joint piece for the commemoration. And why did you choose to commemorate the Easter Rising in the form of jewellery? Why the Easter Rising, I think is a question. Well, it is a very important uh, year and in the history of Ireland. And uh, I, I live in outside Manor Hamilton in the North Leithroom where Sean McDermott is, you know, uh, is so important, I suppose, and uh, so so close to me. Like, uh, so I think uh, we were not, you know, sure about uh, doing a 1960 pieces, but it just kind of it felt that we have to, you know, uh, to complement with the counties. So the pieces, the 1916 pieces, all of them can be wear. If you have a, a county already from counties of Ireland jewelry, you can wear it together. So that was the idea, they complement, the pieces complement each other. And what about your um, feelings towards the Easter Rising and its commemoration? You're from Germany yourself. Yes, well, I would, I would think that one thing that is important to me is a, is a political standpoint. So, um, because it was the people's rising, I think it was rather important. So it, it, it makes me very emotional, as you can see. Very good. And it's, it's great to see that you're so um, impassioned by the commemoration of the Rising. And many people are um, around Leitrim, especially. And we have a picture of Sean Mordemida here. Could you tell me about the design of the jewellery? Because I know there is a special importance around the shape and the materials that you use. You went to. Well, the, the donut shape is actually called Taurus, and it means um, body of revolution. But has, that is actually a, a, a purely geometric term, but in fact, in this case, it really fits the idea. But at the same time, I think it's, it's, a, very, um, it's a very modern piece, yet on both cases, it has a very uh, retro look to it because the one is the hand engraved piece and the other one is the is the women's council's um, signet so it has a it has a although it has a very modern surface it's it's still a very it's a very traditional piece if you like and we then altered every of the pieces like we tried to not create a very very standardized line, but we have tried to to do different things with all the pieces. So one has the seven emeralds, which is one emerald for every one of the seven people. So um, and then we have the the silver donut piece, uh, the Pierce Healy piece, together with the Dublin in gold, and the rose gold chain, which makes it the tricolor. Brilliant. So there's a meaning behind your craft, and there's certainly a meaning that resonates with you. Could you tell me a bit about your launch in the dock recently, and then bringing these jewellery pieces to the, the renaming of the Shrimp Derrida Street in Manhattan? What was that like for you? Am I well, it was really important because it, it was done in Litrum. So 
Uh, one was done in South Litrunt, in the dock, a uh, fantastic place for arts and crafts in Litrunt. Um, and it was in the Litrunt Design House that um, supports highly to all the makers, suppose, in the, in the region, but uh, especially in County Litrunt. So for us, it was important to do this launch in Litrunt. And uh, to launch it in the dock uh, was fantastic support. And uh, then on the same week, on the 29th Sunday um, was the rename of the street, the Lower Main Street in Manor Hamilton. Uh, it was a very important in day in Manor Hamilton and it was linking with that and having the exhibition in the centre, in the Litrum Sculpture mm -hmm. Centre. So I think no, we, get, we generally get a lot of support from the Litrum Design House, we have to say that it, they're really, really good in supporting and us. And that's at the dock? Yes. 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 Yeah. And what about bringing the pieces to Sean, the new Sean McDermott Street in Manor Hamilton? What was that like? It was very really, uh, emotional, I think. Um, and um, for me, you know, I, I live in Manor Hamilton and I mean, I'm living in Ireland since 1998. So as an adult, I, I feel I'm, I'm, I'm Spanish, obviously, and I have a Spanish accent and all that kind of thing. But I feel very Irish, and I, I, I really into the Irish heritage. And um, so for me uh, to have these pieces uh, showing them for Sean Medermans was important. for part one don't forget you can follow us on twitter and facebook join us after the break and we'll hear all about the connection between the halfpenny bridge in dublin and leitrim see you then